All right, guys, it's Jernigam here. We're going to show you a video from Bristol, UK, where the statue falls down. Some people may think this video disrespectful, what I'm doing, but uh, I agree with a lot of people. They shouldn't have knocked that uh, important statue down, what has a lot of history. Um, not everybody thinks the same. Some people think that they've knocked it, the statue down for a reason because of um, people not agreeing with other things and... Uh, it's apparently the statue is racist to um, black people, which I, I can't believe the statue would be. That's what one of the black girls, uh, ladies, have actually said on one of the videos. She says it's apparently racist to people like that. But uh, we all think differently. Um, lots of people in the world, and this, this video, what I'm doing, is not slating anyone, not disrespecting anybody. I'm just telling you how, what the people have said on the video. Some people may take it the wrong way, but there's always people that don't agree with other people. But uh, some people may think knocking that statue down on the TV is disrespectful for a lot of people, especially for the history of people and uh, making the country how it is. But um, I was speaking the truth. I'm not saying anything I shouldn't have said. I'm not being rude to anyone. Now we're going to play the video and see what you guys think about it. And uh, yeah, I've done another video before. All right, let's press play. of a 17th century slave trade owner, Edward Coulson in Bristol, stands no more. Protesters then dragged it through the street to the harbour. For the second day, cities across the country... Protesting in Bristol, rallies. UK. In Glasgow, they stood in their thousands. Glasgow, and over protesting. The weekend, campaigners renamed roads that had links to the slave trade. <laughs> and again in London, despite more warnings... From uh, the London police, protesting. People came together. Saying Black Lives Matter. The second day of the protesters outside of the US Embassy. People that I've spoken to, they're completely aware of COVID-19 and the impact, but they say that this is more important and that they need to be here. George Flooney. Some people are saying that, Death. you know, COVID-19 in the middle of a global pandemic. Right. Should people be doing this? Should people be gathering like this? We have no choice. <laughs> That's how I feel. Coronavirus has been around for a few months. This has been around 400 years. Do you know what I mean? And it's still around, and that, that's a fact. No matter how many times your government can tell you you don't fight for it, you have to. Because you have the ability to, so why wouldn't you? Even though people are saying coronavirus is out there, yeah. what you're doing, some people would argue, is quite irresponsible. It's irresponsible if you could don't take the measures into your own hands to look after yourself and look after the people around you. And this is part of that. This is just showing how important it is. We understand that the pandemic is going on, but if not now, when? How many more people have to die? How many more of us have to lose our lives before change happens? And you know, yeah, coronavirus is going on. We're all afraid of it, but I'm afraid every day. <laughs> Over in America, where protests first began, a newlywed couple joined in after they said their vows in Philadelphia. In San Francisco, thousands marched over the Golden Gate Bridge. And in Buffalo, New York, two police officers were charged for assaulting a 75-year-old protester in a video that went viral. They pled not guilty. Some of their colleagues stood outside the courthouse in support of them. The protester remains in hospital. Back in the UK this evening, crowds that had gathered outside the US Embassy in Nine Elms have moved towards Downing Street where last night there were confrontations between the police and protesters. And we've been policing similar protests over the last few days, and 23 of our officers have sustained injuries as a result of policing this protest, which is totally unacceptable. It's gone up to 27 officers, not 23. The arrests were made yesterday. Organisers of the start that are of injured, the day the 27 are injured, please. Peaceful, and they'll hope that those... Was 23 injured, but 27 now. Well, one man who knows all about the controversy surrounding that statue of Edward Colston is the directly elected mayor of Bristol, Labour's Mervyn Rees. He joins us now. Um, Mr Rees, do you support the police in their search for those responsible for criminal damage, or do you support the tearing down of the statue? Well, putting up those kind of binary options really doesn't help us navigate a complicated world, Krishnan. Uh, what I cannot do as, a, as an elected politician is support... Uh, criminal damage or social disorder like this. But I would never pretend that the statue of a slaver in the middle of Bristol, the city in which I grew up, uh, and someone who may well have owned one of my ancestors, was anything other than a personal affront to me. And I cannot, uh, you know, and I've obviously shared my concerns 
uh, about the potential uh, public health dangers of, uh, of mass gatherings. Well, why was that statue still up in the way it was then? I mean, is that a failure of democratic politics or is it the result of democratic politics? Well, it's been there. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a point of debate for the city and, and tension in the city for some time. But Bristol only really started to talk about its slaving history in a meaningful way um, at the turn of the millennium. And uh, dare I say, politicians, but not just that, journalists as well, did not cover this in a mature way. And the city struggled to cope, as they did when it got to abolition 200 year uh, uh, as well. So the city's not been equipped to have that kind of uh, uh, debate about what the statue is and, and the place it holds in giving uh, the city uh, meaning today. But if you look at that phrase, criminal damage, that the police have used, and the Home Secretary has supported them and said it's, it's terrible, what, you know, what's happened. Who has done more criminality and more damage? You know, is it, is it the protesters well, I, or is it Colston? Well, I, I mean, I mean, if you weigh up the two, clearly Colston would uh, be a bigger uh, criminal uh, than the protesters. I don't think that is, but that, again, that's, that offers us a debate that perhaps isn't um, always very helpful. And look, I mean, I heard about the Home Secretary's uh, remarks, you know, and, and I can understand that's, you know, I'm not condoning criminal damage or, and, and that kind of disorder, particularly as we work closely with the police and it's their responsibility and as so many offers uh, come into positions of risk, uh, we recognize that. But as a politician, you are not a police officer. As a politician, one of your jobs is to understand your country. In 68, Martin Luther King, uh, sorry, 67, Martin Luther King said, you know, I walked the streets of Chicago and looked at people rioting and, and, and urged them to be nonviolent. And they said to him, but what about our government? They're using massive doses of violence to solve their problems. And King said, never again would I speak to the violence of the oppressed and the marginalized without speaking to the violence of the biggest purveyors of violence in the world, my own government. Now, we have at the moment a government that through 10 years of austerity and a reduction of services, uh, the loss of hope to so many people on the margins of the community, through the Windrush scandal, uh, you know, through the hostile environment, uh, perhaps created, uh, you know, a context in which the frustrations of our people, you know, in this country have built up. Now, that's not to justify the violence. That's what I'm saying. It's not to justify the criminal damage. But if you're going to lead, you need to understand the material you're working with and what we're doing. So, so will you be pleased? With a very frustrated country. Will you be right? pleased to see people prosecuted over this? Again, Christian, I'm not. I'm not going in there. That's that's not. I what I want to see is. But this is a politician's not, dilemma, isn't it? I mean, you you you're no, seeking election, and you you know people need to know, you know, because this is inevitably as as these sorts of actions happen, it does divide people between those who think this is criminal damage and you know, and, and over the line, and those people who think it's justified. And, and you will have to decide, I'm sorry it's a binary choice, but you will have to decide which side of that line you are. No, Christian, it's a, it, it's a politician's dilemma. It's a journalist's search for simplicity and binary conflict in a complicated world. No, it's not world. simplicity. I'm, you're, I'm allowing you to explain all the subtleties of your position, and I totally understand that. But yeah. on the doorstep, someone's going to ask you, do you support prosecution for those people? And, and what I would say on the doorstep is, in more than just three seconds, explain all the dynamics that are, at place, that are at play here. And it really underserves the country, it underserves our ability. Has historically, in my experience, it's happened in the city before, when you try and fit it in a headline or a soundbite to go in a 10-second news clip. What we have are a number of things that are true at the same time. This is criminal damage. We cannot accept criminal damage. We cannot accept uh, social disorder. <laughs> but at the same time, we have a statue up to someone who made their money by throwing sometimes the bodies of his commodities, our people, into into water. There's a piece of kind of almost historical uh, poetry here that you know, and now is on the on the bottom of the water. So I'm not condoning the criminality. What I'm saying is you have to understand the country you're working with, the frustrations, you know, of the people and the frustrations at this moment. And Priti Patel can be outraged, but it would be, you know, we would also love to to hear some outrage about the deaths in custody. Uh, you know, in both here and in the United States, ongoing racial inequality. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that, guys. I know it was a short video, but give it a like, give it a comment, share it with your friends, and that's about it for this video. See you next one. Peace.